Welcome back to the mini lecture on cell biology. We covered the cellular structure and function and cell division in the previous part. Now we will look at cellular organelles and a little bit about cellular metabolism. Looking back at the typical cell, and we already spoke about the cell membrane and the nucleus. Let's now focus our attention to the many organelles or little organs found within the cytoplasm. The first one in the list is endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes. Endoplasmic reticulum is a membranous network attached to the nuclear membrane, so it is found around the nucleus. It is the site of protein synthesis. There are two types, smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum. The ribosomes are made of RNA and protein. They are the site of protein synthesis. They are found in two locations. So they are free ribosomes, they are, which are floating in the cytoplasm, and they are attached ribosomes, which are bound to the endoplasmic reticulum, and that one is known as the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The third organelle is the Golgi apparatus. It is a network of flattened, smooth membranes, and it is found next to the endoplasmic reticulum. It packages proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum into secretory vesicles. These vesicles transport proteins to other organelles or release them from the cell. Now, if you look at the cell again, Rough endoplasmic reticulum, as I told you earlier, is found around the nucleus. The ribosomes are bound to it. You have free ribosomes floating in the cytoplasm as well. And then you have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which is further away. This is without the ribosomes. And you have Golgi complex, which is next to the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, before we look at other organelles. Let me just share with you the central dogma of molecular biology. Remember we spoke about DNA earlier and how it is duplicated and an exact copy passed down to daughter cells during cell division. Now DNA is the genetic code. It contains all information required to sustain life. DNA is found in chromosomes which are found in the nucleus. And each human cell has 23 pairs of chromosomes, 22 of which are autosomes, and one set of sex chromosomes. A set of DNA codon is called a gene. And there are between 20,000 to 25,000 genes in humans. Now, the number of genes does not dictate the complexity of an organism. Interestingly, banana has more genes than us. <laughs> it has about 36,000 genes. So it's not just the number. It's basically how genes are expressed and how complex proteins are formed and they perform their function. Information from DNA is carried via RNA out of the nucleus where protein synthesis occurs. So to put everything in context, let's look at the nucleus and the cytoplasm. So DNA in the nucleus undergoes a process which is called transcription and a messenger RNA is formed. Now DNA has exons and introns. Exons are the portions of DNA which code for proteins. Introns are non-coding regions. So the RNA which is formed from a sequence of DNA containing both exons and introns, the RNA will then undergo what is known as RNA splicing. So the RNA which was formed by introns will be taken out. And the RNA which was formed only by the exon part of the DNA will then leave the nucleus. This messenger RNA will then be taken to um, the endoplasmic reticulum and the ribosomes. Ribosomes will assemble proteins based on the code that is found within the messenger RNA. Okay, so DNA to RNA and RNA to protein. 
this protein will then be packaged in the Golgi apparatus before it is released as the final product. Lysosomes are small vesicles found within the cytoplasm. They contain enzymes. These enzymes break down old organelles and they help in digesting foreign substances. They also play a very important role in apoptosis. When we talk about cancer, then we'll discuss this in more detail. Peroxisomes are similar in structure, but even smaller than lysosomes. The chemicals contained within the peroxisomes detoxify harmful substances. They also help in neutralizing the dangerous free radicals. Another organelle found within the cell which is very crucial to cellular function is mitochondria. Now, these are the powerhouses of the cell. They are surrounded by a double lipid bilayer membrane similar to plasma membrane. They participate in oxidative phosphorylation, ATP production. There is increased inner membrane surface area provided by folds, which are known as Christi, as you can see in the diagram. Mitochondria contain their own RNA, DNA, and ribosomes. Now, let's look at how these mitochondria perform their function as powerhouses of the cell. We all need a constant supply of nutrients. So once we consume food, complex molecules contained within the food are broken down into smaller or simpler molecules via the process of digestion. Now these molecules, simple molecules, are then transported via blood to all cells in the body. Within the cells, these simpler molecules undergo catabolism or oxidation within the mitochondria, and this yields energy. This energy is captured in the form of a molecule which is called ATP or adenosine triphosphate, and this energy can be used to power all functions that require energy in the cell. For example, in case of muscle cells, ATP is used for the contraction of muscles. So in a nutshell, the ATP is created from the chemical energy contained within organic molecules. It is used in the synthesis of organic molecules, muscle contraction, active transport, and so on. So basically, ATP stores and transfers energy. Now, chemical tasks of maintaining essential cellular functions can be divided into two types, anabolism and catabolism. I just described these two processes in the previous slide. So catabolic reactions, uh, which occur when larger molecules are broken down, can be equated to deconstructing a complex Lego structure to its constituent Lego bricks. And in this process, energy is released, which is captured in the form of ATP. Now this ATP can then be used to help anabolic reactions. Anabolic reactions are the opposite of catabolism. So basically, you take Lego bricks and then you construct complex structures with it. Okay? So this is one use of ATP, anabolic reactions. But ATP, as I told you earlier, can be used as an energy currency for many processes in the cell. Another important point to remember is that cells require oxygen to carry out their metabolic functions. Uh, and these reactions are called aerobic reactions. Sometimes cells have to survive under anaerobic conditions, which means there is lack of oxygen or absence of oxygen. So cells have the ability to continue their metabolic activities under oxygen poor conditions, but this is usually not sustainable for a long time. Okay. Moving on to the other components in the cell. Next in line is cytoskeleton. As the name tells you, it is the skeleton of a cell. So it maintains the cell's shape and internal organization. It permits movement of substances within the cell. 
microfilaments of which actin filament is an example. Their rod-like structures are involved in contraction of muscle fibers. In non-muscle cells, microfilaments help to provide support and shape to the cell. Microtubules are relatively straight, slender and cylindrical structures and they consist of protein called tubulin. They help provide shape and support for cells. They also provide conducting channels through which various substances can move through the cytoplasm. So they act like rail tracks on which you know you can transport substances in a cargo. Intermediate filaments also help determine the shape of the cell and examples are neurofilaments which are found in the nerve cells. Centrioles, cilia and flagella. Now centrioles are cylindrical structures. They are involved in cell division as we saw earlier. So the centrioles are assembled on two poles of the cell and they pull the chromosomes to the two poles of the cells before the cell divides into two. Cilia and flagella extend from the surface of some cells and can bend thus causing movement. Cilia generally have the function of moving fluid or particulates over the surface of the cell. For example, ciliated cells of the respiratory tract move mucus that has trapped foreign particles over the surface of respiratory tissues. A flagellum is usually a much larger structure than a cilium and is often used like a tail to propel the cell forward. The only example of a cell in human body with a flagellum is the sperm. Alright, so with this, uh, I come to the end of the second part. I hope I was able to convey to you the structure of a cell and various functions it performs, the organelles and how they all come together to allow the cell to function as a living unit. Thank you so much for paying attention. Bye bye for now.